The so music industry is very small anyway. There's not that many people. The music press is even smaller and very much of one ideology. You know, for example, here in 2017, they put Jeremy Corbyn, leader of the Labour Party, <clears throat> on the front cover they're not, and did a puff piece interview of him. They didn't cover any of the other parties, obviously. It's that, and that's the nature of it. It's, there's very much a, 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 a political agenda there. Curiously though, and this is again, perhaps a side, we can come back to, to Jordan. That wasn't totally the case in the music industry until 2016. And we put an album out in 2015 and we, we did the promo tour press junkets. They didn't ask about politics. When we put an album out in 2018, Delta, they, and we did the press junkets, they didn't ask about music. It was like something changed. Trump. Trump, and here it was Brexit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they started realizing, wait a second, perhaps we're not controlling this narrative anymore. We need to start making sure every artist has our ideology or they've got to go. Mm -hmm. And curiously, you tweeted something mm -hmm. and it caused a firestorm. What was the tweet? Well, so through the pandemic, I took the opportunity to read all the books I hadn't read and uh, got to read some long Russian uh, uh, fictions that, that had been gathering dust on the, on the bookshelf. And uh, I was, I was uh, as well as I even read Mao's Little Red Book. I read your book and um, uh, Blackout and I, I read everything. And um, it was, a, in some sense, a great time to do that. Having worked flat out for 14 years, it was my time to unwind and and do such things. And, and one of the books I tweeted about was Andy Noe's book, Unmasked, documenting the BLM riots and Antifa movement in America through tw basically 2020, documenting the 19 people killed in the first 14 days of the BLM riots. And um, I said something like, I've forgotten the exact tweet, congratulations, Mr. Andy Noe, you're a brave guy. I thought he was brave because as described in the book, he'd been attacked whilst reporting, covering these, uh, these um, events. And um, if somehow, and by the way, I had no, I had no Twitter followers. I had like 3,000 Twitter followers. It was not like nothing. Somehow it just completely exploded and it went up all the trending things. And my initial response was like, oh, it'll just go. It'll just pass, whatever. It's just a thing. But then what happens, and, and people who have had this experience, well, I've... I've shared it with them. Is it, you know they say Twitter isn't real life until it's real life, and what happens is then people you start getting the phone calls, mm -hmm. and people that you love and people that you work with are calling up, and then and then it's like it gets real because Twitter isn't really real, and and then it becomes real, and unfortunately, the issue of Antifa I think to a lot of people who aren't let's say following events or um, necessarily interested in politics or that. It's, it, they don't even know about it. And, and actually, this is part of the, the, the problem even with the, 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 the book itself is people don't know the, about the, the businesses being ruined through the BLM rights. People don't know. I mean, you've, you wrote about it in your book and, you, and, you've, and you've talked about it. But a lot of my uh, friends I have would be like, what? I never heard about it because the, me the mainstream media don't cover it. Mm -hmm. And actually, probably that was part of, part of the... I was thinking, why did I even post this about this book. And I think subconsciously, one of the reasons is that I was frustrated at seeing mainstream media rightly covering a lot of far right extremism, but not covering far left extremism. And I was like, hang on a sec, you've got to do both here. And so I felt like it's an, uh, an important book in the conversation. Anyway, so um, the, then it became real life and then all things sort of uh, imploded in, in my life and things, things completely unraveled. But what are people calling you? Into did you actually read this book? Like, what are they saying on the other end of the line? Like, it's it's like, how could this have been a firestorm? Congratulations on the book. You're a brave man. And he knows a journalist. He goes into Antifa territory. It's scary. They're throwing Molotov cocktails. You know, what could they possibly be saying on the other end of the line? How, like, well, one of did the, you actually read a book? Like, what are they saying? Quite, of course they haven't read a book. I got lots of private DMs saying, I read the book too. It's great. Well, I don't know what the fuss is about. But uh, one, one of the tricks is a word trick because it's Antifa. If you're anti-Antifa, they assume then with their brilliant maths that you must be pro far. Mm. And, and so, and one of this is one of the things, one of the tactics they do is they come after you online because that's how they can get you. So they build this, all this detail. So they change your Wikipedia page. So that night they were, they were saying, change it from Winston Marshall is a musician to Winston Marshall is a fascist. 
And my friend who can access Wikipedia was trying to get rid of it. And she spent the night and they kept changing it back. And it was just a, it was basically 48 hours of this kind of online war where they're trying to eviscerate mm -hmm. your entire online life, whatever that is, which then is your real life. So um, I think that's part of the problem. Um, I think that there's a con as an idea that even if they accept, yeah, Antifa are doing violent things, they accept it as good because if they're fighting Nazis, they are justified in doing it. The problem is there aren't, they aren't fighting Nazis. No. Um, and the problem is they're burning down federal buildings. But they, if they conceive of the state as a fascist state, which is why they keep having to say people like Trump are fascists, because it justifies their behavior. Mm -hmm. So I think that's another one of the, the dynamics at play. Yeah, oh, it's a, an absolute trick. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things that has been stunning to us in America, and I think a lot of people in the UK don't understand this, when the media jumps and they pretend that January 6th was a day of terrorism, we literally had people that were burning churches, police precincts, police precincts to the ground, and it was never called terrorism. Mm -hmm. It was called justified violence, yeah. understandable upset, understandable anger, and real people's lives and businesses were destroyed in the chaos of BLM mm -hmm. and Antifa, who are literally masked thugs, mm -hmm. unidentified. Um, and not only that, you have a celebrity culture in America where they say, we'll bail you out. Mm -hmm. So people, we actually had two people that threw a Molotov cocktail into a police cruiser in New York City. These were Yale graduates, mm. right? And they were doing this because you had a celebrity culture that was pretending that this wasn't violence. And it was it was so it's, weird it's in New weird York thing. as well, because in New York, which is, and I used to live in New York, and so I have many friends there. That's where a lot of the, there's a, deep riots happening. And if you go to downtown New York, they were, they were putting up uh, plywood on all, all the shop fronts to protect them. My, uh, my, my friends, they're described going for walks with their baby and the child with an upturned police car in the middle of Lafayette Street. Mm. And um, they watched as the Dwayne Reed on Lafayette uh, was attempt, they tried to burn it down. And yet, a lot of the people living there were kind of somehow blocked, like didn't see that. Like, I don't quite understand. They or they saw it and blocked it out in their mind. Because the media the told them it was fine. Was yeah, it? it was. The media told them it was fine. It is cognitive dissonance. Mm. And it's like, this is what we deserve. This mm. is what should be happening. Yeah, that's such a good point. They, if they saw it, they're like, yeah, this is the right thing. This isn't even, a, this isn't touched the injustices that have been going on. Right. This is totally They don't see righteous. it as domestic terrorism, mm -hmm. which, and then they see a, a you know grandma in a Capitol building that's not supposed to be there. And they're like, that is domestic terrorism. And rightfully, as you're saying, we have to call out extremism, whether it's on the right or whether it's on the left. That's the key as well, actually, because um, coming out of that situation, so uh, we'll go maybe into the, the story of what happened next, but um, it would have been very easy for me to just come out and go, look at all the lefties. But one thing I do find a little bit frustrating is that, let's say Fox News will often cry out Antifa, but they do the same thing in reverse of CNN, where they, CNN don't talk about Antifa such things. So I think it's important to find the middle where, like I say, you're both, look, there's problems on both sides here. And that, that voice, I, I'd like to hear more of from America, but perhaps right. that's a side point. No, that's it. It's exactly right. And I think that's where you were coming from. And you didn't even say that. You just said, good book. Mm -hmm. And now people are calling you. What happens next?